a 7.1 round of applause for Joan. We keep it going until Gabrielle is standing right here. Enthused, please. Thank you. So I'm sitting in the car with my best friend Edie, listening to the woman as she explains to us how this is going to work. Um, we were about to become call girls. Um, this was when I, I was 22. I was living in California. I had just graduated from college, and I w had this vague idea I wanted to move to New York to become an artist, but I didn't really know how to do that. Um, I, my future sort of, I looked, out, I looked out at my future, and it was this big unfurnished room, and I was really scared. My friend Edie came to live with me, and like me, she had a liberal arts education, which meant she'd spent the last four years reading novels. Um, <laughs> so we sat down to look through the want ads, and we didn't really want to be receptionists or, um, you know, sales girls. And so we read this ad that said, discreet company for the man of distinction. And it was for an escort service. So we thought we would just go on the interview for a joke. It was supposed to be a lark. Um, so here we were. The woman told us to meet us in a parking lot, and in her car, <laughs> in her car, in her car. And um, so we were dressed for the part. We had stretch pants on and leopard print halter tops and high heels and glitter makeup. And um, we were very young. And the woman, of course, was not taken in by our disguises. She looked at us and she said, have you two ever done anything like this before? And I said, no. And Edie said, we'll go together. And like two novices are better than one. And uh, I uh, think the woman probably thought this is too good to be true. Because the next minute she said, well, this is how it works. The guy calls me. I get his number, I call you and give it to you. Remember, your, when you call him back, describe yourselves. They like little details they can think about while you're on your way over. I get 25 out of every 100. You can split the rest any way you want. Then whoosh, we're out of her car, we're back in Edie's car, and I'm thinking, okay, this is over. And Edie looks at me and she goes, I'm gonna be Eve, what's your name gonna be? <laughs> and, and so now I don't know what to do. I'm like, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm scared, but I'm also kind of excited. I, I want to break out of my life, and I want to reinvent myself, and I want to do something. And Edie sees my hesitation, and she says, well, Colette would do it. Yeah. Now, <laughs> now, she had me. I loved the novels of Colette, and Colette had reinvented herself and left the provinces and gone to Paris and danced topless and written novels about sex. And so I wanted to be Colette. <laughs> so I said to Edie, you know, that kind of cinched it for me. I said, well, if you're going to be Eve, I'm going to be Jezebel. I don't know where that came from. <laughs> and um, so we go home. We wait for the phone. The call comes. We drive over to the city. We go to the hotel. We go up the elevator. We knock on the door. And the guy opens the door. And guess who it is? George C. Scott. So we go, I'm really, you're not kidding. So we go into, I, I'm going, I can't believe this. Edie's going, I can't believe this too. We go into the room, he goes, would you like a drink? It even sounds like George C. Scott. He's got that, you know, he's got an unmistakable voice. And I go to Edie, oh my God, it even sounds like him. And Edie, you know, looks at me too. And then the, he goes, you know, I'm not really, I'm not really him. I'm his brother. We look and sound alike. And I'm thinking, yeah, yeah, you're right. I know Patton when I see him. I know Mr. Rochester from Jane Eyre when I see him. And I'm Jezebel and this is Eve. <laughs> so we drink our champagne and then the next thing you know, there are three naked bodies rolling around on the bed. George was not so much an actor that night, but a director orchestrating our tango. Um, as Jezebel, I actually felt braver, more assertive than I normally did. I was able to explore sides of myself and to explore sides of Eve that, <laughs> that I would not have done before. We had a lot of time. We way overstayed our hour. <laughs> um, and then after that, I decided, you know, I, this wasn't really for me. It was never going to get any better than that. Um, <laughs> my, uh, my friend Edie decided that she wanted to be Eve for a while, and she kept getting dressed up and going out. And she saved a lot of money, and she went to Japan. I, I, you know, went to work and finally got to New York and decided to become an artist. Although not Colette, I wanted to be myself. But even now, when I'm really scared or nervous or have to do something like this, where I'm called upon to be braver than myself, I call on Jezebel. And George C. Scott never had a brother. Yay, yeah. hey, Gabrielle!